and welcome back to a new video and a very happy new year to you all. I thought we could just jump on for one of our first videos back in the new year to do a bit of a Christmas haul. Um, I received a few little light bits, bits for Christmas and I thought I'd share them with you and I'm excited to show them to you and use them and potentially make some new videos in the new year with them. So let's start off with one that I've been really excited about. So if you've been following me for a while last year, I received this lovely hand lettered book that says uh, Lucy Locke's Brilliant Thoughts and Plans. And we started off this book trying to use it as a bullet journal, which, not that page, <laughs> which worked out quite well. We started off with doing some little trackers and some planners bits and I really enjoyed doing it I really enjoyed using it for that but because of the lines and everything I couldn't push it to its potential and also the paper was quite thin so I couldn't really use it too well for bullet journaling so <laughs> towards the end it was bec becoming a bit of a just a, a list making book and you know writing down my thoughts and ideas um for my youtube for my art for things in general um lots of things in fact so i used it for more for that sort of thing i am running out of pages there's not many left um so i was bought a proper bullet journal so this is a yop and tom bullet journal and it's this lovely lovely green color with a little hummingbird on it um really beautiful i've not opened it yet um, but it is just a generic A5, five, A5 dot grid uh, journal. So I'm really excited to use that. I'm hoping to do a couple of bullet journal videos. I'm not going to make my channel a bullet journaling channel. Um, it's not something I tend to do very often. And I know there's going to be some months where I just won't do it because I don't have the time. Um, but I'd really like to do some bullet journaling for me and a couple of spreads maybe for YouTube as well. Maybe I'll do a couple showing some new trackers I've done or flipping through this month's spreads or something like that. Just let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see, if there's anything in particular. Um, but I'm really, really excited to try this. It's a very thick book. It's going to take me quite far. If I don't finish in any year, I don't have to. So that's very nice. It's not, um, it's not confining me to a year of doing this. So I can do this over a couple of years if that's how long it takes me to do it. But that's my first present. I was really, really pleased to open this. And I'm really excited to try and do some more things for it. Um, next, let's keep to branding sort of thing. So my thoughtful partner also bought me some little handmade stamps. Um, these say Lucy Locks Art and Miniatures on them. So I use my, I use some uh, lino cut stamps that we actually made ourselves, which work really, really well, but it's nice to have a nice professional one that's not going to be difficult to stamp. And it's, you know, it's all flat and there's no nicks out of it where I've accidentally nicked it whilst lino cutting. Um, and then there's also a very, very small version as well, which is not going to focus, is it? Um, a very small version as well so we've got these two stamps here and some lilac ink and some black ink so these are by let's have a look these are by the green stamp company um get stamped so they they make these um so i don't know how much they are obviously it's a gift but very very nice i'm excited to use those i'm going to use them for my labels for our stalls to put on price tags um, maybe on your, um, when you buy something through the website, it'll be on the envelopes or the parcels, things like that. I think it's going to come in really, really handy and I'm really pleased with that. It's just going to just refine my packaging and, and selling aspects a bit, a bit more and just make them a little bit more premium, which is always a nice thing to do. So that's another one of my gifts. Let me have a little sip of mulled wine. Um, and next we've got, it's a little bit of a running theme now that my partner always gets me a new washi tape. So the last couple of years I've received, um, for birthdays and Christmases, I've received a little peach one, a little donut one and some like autumnal leaves. And then this, this Christmas I've received a little cat washi tape, which I think is adorable. We obviously own a cat, so, um, well, we don't own him. <laughs> he owns us. Um, some little cats on there I think that's really sweet really really sweet so that's going to add to my collection up there which is actually 
have, have overgrown my little um, <laughs> stand for them, so I may have to get a new one very shortly. But yes, a little washi tape, which is lovely. So I'll be using that in my um, bullet journal as well, which is lovely. Um, next is a moleskin. I get a moleskin every year and I'm really pleased that I do. I've still got a couple still to do. I'm working on one currently and I have a Japanese one. Um, do you know where it's all the pages are linked together and they're not just individual sheets um, and then this one this year is a watercolor album but it's it opens at the top rather than the side so I'm hoping to use that for more landscapes the reason I love these now I've mentioned this before and I'm, I think I may have mentioned it in my latest sketchbook tour and um, the etcher sketchbooks are absolutely lovely the watercolor paper is gorgeous and they're really beautiful to work on but the smallest a6 is still too big this these moleskins fit in my back pocket, my back jean pocket, really, really nice so that I don't have to worry about carrying a bag around with me if I don't want to. I can fit this and a pen in my back pocket and that's that and I can take it anywhere I want. So I love having a moleskin and I love having plenty stocked up because sometimes I'll get in a bit of a hype um, and I'll suddenly fill like three, three in a year and it's always nice to have plenty waiting for me to start filling them because I definitely go through these sometimes when I'm on a bit of a roll so i'm excited to try this out and i, I really love the fact that this can be a, a nice landscape format i think it'll come in really handy it's something that i've been trying to do more plain air sketches of and this will be perfect for that so i'm really pleased with that gift um next which i think is a really cute little gift is a little pack of two bob ross puzzles <laughs> so these these are little puzzles um it also came with this cute little stand so it stands on your desk like this and it has a Bob Ross painting and painting and then on the back here oh not that one on the back here it has a little Bob Ross quote so this one says if we all painted the same way what a boring world it would be and I love that I think I'm gonna have this sat on my desk permanently I think it's really really sweet <laughs> and a nice little addition and then there are two little puzzles in there um, so if you know any Bob Ross fans, this is something you should definitely keep in mind for next year or for birthdays. Um, and then these are the two puzzles that you make. So there's one of Bob's face as he's painting and one of his landscapes here. So I'm really excited to do those. I think I'm going to enjoy them. And depending on how big they are, maybe I'll even frame one and have it up on the wall. I think that could be quite cute. Um, so like I say, a very nice little gift for a Bob Ross fan. I know he is you know, an artist's uh, kind of hero. How I many is mine anyway? A little hero. Um, and I'm excited to make those. Okay, so on to some slightly bigger gifts. Um, not that they weren't big gifts. They were all big gifts. Um, one, this is what I received off my brother, which I was very shocked to receive because I have a little wish list, which is just for guidance if no one can think of anything. And he actually... Uh, initiated getting these himself he researched them and found them and they are a big 36 set of Windsor and Newton uh, pigment markers so I have used these in the past I've done a few bits of artwork with them and I really enjoy them I would say they're a bit of a midway between uh, an alcohol marker and a paint marker they're neither um, but it's kind of that's what I would say they react like and they're a little bit on the drier side um, really dry but they you can blend them on certain papers you, there is a colorless blender in there the white picks them up and and makes them a lot lighter so you, so this 36 set could be stretched to you know 60 um a 72 set if i could do my maths quick enough um by just adding the white in there and lighting all the pigments really really lovely pens and i would recommend you trying this i do have a small set like i've mentioned before but they're all actually drying out a little bit so i'm really pleased to get a nice new set and with that he bought some uh winsor newton marker paper which is a nice smooth it's the thin marker paper that you'd usually use with um pro markers and things like that um but it works out really well i did i did an oh i did an initial swatch of the colors and some lightening so this is with the white over the top as you can see it really picks up that color and makes it a little lighter this is me doing some initial blending probably not very good on this paper um and as you can see it's got that kind of dry texture to it which i think works really really well and there's a lovely array of colors and of the colors i already had all of them are duplicates except two which i thought was pretty good going considering 
Um, this is quite an extensive selection of colours um, and I still managed to get two non-duplicates, which is very, very nice. So I will do some more swatching so you can see um, in this video um, shortly, but I'll mention that in a minute. So that's those, very, very nice set. And then the last two presents, these were off my partner and she, very, very generous. I The first one is a supply I've seen Monkey Mintaka use quite a lot, but I've actually seen a lot of other artists use and I've been very jealous and very eager to try them. But it's one of those things where they're quite a pricey supply and I it's not something I would probably ever buy myself. So to get them as a Christmas gift is amazing. It just takes that kind of guilt of spending so much money and I really appreciate the gift. Um, and that is a set of Karen Dash uh, Near Colour 2 um crayons so these are actually water soluble wax crayons which to me in my head doesn't really compute but they are fabulous i've seen a lot of people use them and they're beautiful so they are they're a wax crayon so this is the tin beautiful caran dash tin um let's hope i don't drop any of these because i'd be very upset um and when you open it there's a lovely set of 40 crayons and like i say they do look like wax crayons but they are water soluble, which like I say, is it doesn't really compute in my brain, but I'm really, really excited to try these. And I will be swatching these and the markers on some paper in this video. And potentially I might make a little bit of art here and there or some doodles with them to show how they work. Um, so just stay tuned for that. I will do some swatching and we'll have a look at how soluble these actually are. And something I've actually just noticed is inside this um, sleeve is a little swatching chart. So interesting, I can use that, fantastic. Um, but how amazing is that? I'm really, really pleased. I I have tried wax water soluble crayons, but not the Caran Dash ones. I know these are quite superior, so I'm really excited to try these and hopefully incorporate them into some future artwork. And then last but not least, the biggest present of them all, which I'm so blown away with receiving. I have been trying to do some larger pieces of artwork and you've seen if you've seen my 2023 goals video, I mentioned that I've started a big piece of artwork. The problem is I have a, I believe it's a Winsor Newton um, easel, but it's one of the A-frame easels. So it comes to it, it's kind of like one of these ones, a big one. The problem is the back leg collapses if there's too much pressure on it. It's not holding its weight anymore. And also because it is an A-frame, if you have a big canvas on, when you work on these corners, it tends to tip a little bit. It's not very stable. Um, so I've been eyeing up a H-frame um easel for a long long time i'm moving backwards because uh, bring it into shot i received one i received <laughs> I, rece I can't bring it it's gonna be too big to bring into shot i'm moving all my life it's gonna be too too big to bring into shot but this is it this is the big big thing it's uh it's about the same height as me um and then this comes up it's all adjustable and it's all folded it folds away flat as well which is really really cool and I'm so excited to use it. Um, let me see if I can bring, bring this up. So this actually comes right up. You can take it, that's almost touching my ceiling. Um, and this actually is a little box where I can put some paintbrushes as well. Um, really, really cool, but it, it can go as high as you want it to go. Uh, that actually doesn't go underneath the beam in the middle of my room. That's how tall it is. Just tilt things around, very professional. Um, so yeah, that is my final gift and I'm so excited to use it. I'm going to I'm going to swap over my canvas and put my new um put put it on my new easel and hopefully we can create some bigger artwork. Um but I'll show some little snippets of all these things soon and uh get going, do some swatching and maybe some art as well. So let's get on with that and test all these different supplies out and see how they all work. Apologies for how ratty I was looking in that last clip. I think that was uh, that's the look of someone who's relaxed for a whole week and eaten her weight in uh, Christmas food. So apologies for for that. I, I obviously thought I looked acceptable at the time. Um, but anyway, I was going to add these swatching clips over my talking to try and hide the visual aspect of that last clip but um, I wanted to kind of talk about them a little bit more 
and about the supplies. So I did use that swatching card for the Caran d'Ache and I also made another swatching card because I wanted to test out the water solubility and by god these are beautiful and very much worth their money. If you have been teetering on the edge of getting these, definitely do. They are beautifully soft and when you add water there is no ghosting, they they so, you know they they dissolve in the water really beautifully and they're just very nice to work with and likewise with the Winsor & Newton pigment, pigment markers they're a bit of an enigma I don't feel like many people use them very often but I, I, I enjoyed using them they're very lovely and I do create a piece of artwork at the end of this video so please stay tuned for that if you want to see how they work together I did a bit of a mixed media piece um, and then this is me just using the stamps that is beautiful. I learned from the first stamp in the lilac colour that I shouldn't press down too hard. I'm, I kind of uh, mishmash the, the small lettering so I need to just press a little lighter. But that's stamped beautifully. I'm really excited to use that. Um, I've already put this, uh, the works and wisdom of Bob Ross little... Uh, stand up on my desk. It's already staring at me um, with a nice piece of artwork on show and I have made this puzzle um, so I did the one without Bob Ross's face because as much as I love Bob Ross I wanted one of his paintings and I thought this is as close as I'm gonna get to a Bob Ross painting um, so I actually have finished this and I'm going to get a frame for it and put it in a frame I think it'll look lovely on the wall and it was very very relaxing to do I love doing a puzzle at Christmas it's just one of those things isn't it we've actually got one on the go at the moment a really big one of Mount Fuji and some um, cherry blossom trees you know the Sakura um, so I'm, I'm excited to finish that off it's, it's just one of these things that really unwinds us and and I, if you're not a puzzle person, maybe you've just not found the right puzzle. <laughs> and that's all I will say. Um, but anyway, onto the artwork. So I, I did want to test out the pigment markers and the Caran d'Ache near colours together. Um, so I kind of took a little leaf out of Monkey Mintaka's book um, here on YouTube slash Instagram. And although I didn't go quite as bright and as bold colour wise as, as she would usually go, but I kind of went down with some pigment markers to get the base colours, building up a little bit of shadow and um, highlights in there with with those, you know, leaving the whites for the highlights. This is a photo from Pexels, a free reference stock imaging uh, website, which I just went on, scrolled through their main page, didn't particularly Google anything, and just came up with something that I think I like the look of and I wanted to replicate. Um, so I just went in there and just added all the colours. The trees in the reference photo here that I'm doing are obviously very far in the distance and a lot darker, but my colour's quite bright with some of these sets, so I had to kind of sort out what I was doing there by layering with the colours. Um, but yes, I kind of, like you can see, I just kept up with layering all those up and then I started to layer with the Caran d'Ache. Now, the texture that this Caran d'Ache gave, so this is my Paper Chase uh, A4 sketchbook. I have had this for a while and I've been slowly chipping away at it. Um, and the texture on there really brought out the Caran d'Ache's texture and, and it as you can see there it's just lovely it's a really lovely texture but I also wanted to add that watercolor element to it so I do come in after I've darkened everything you know layering up those greens layering up the dark black the one downside is obviously you can't get too fine of a point with them but then I guess it is a wax crayon I don't know what you'd expect without sharpening it with a fine fine point um, and then I went in with some water and just softened the texture I didn't fully remove it because I did enjoy it and I did go back over once I'd done this as well just to add a little bit more texture in there but it helped with uh, darkening it as, as I said I couldn't get those those dark greens so the black kind of melting in there when I added the water really helped and then I just scribbled on a bit of blue for the background and that is the artwork I hope you have enjoyed this video um, if you did please hit that thumbs up comment down below if you've received any cool gifts this Christmas and I'll see you in the next one